Video transitions seem to be all the rage these days, but one of the most popular at the moment is the zoom transition effect. We recently did a project for Production Lamington for a guy called uh, Fraser, and we used this zoom transition effect for this little segment showing off his artwork on buildings and things like that. Um, and whilst we were down there, we filmed a tutorial on how we actually captured one of these. So you guys can check that out. Um, and then we'll meet back here and I'll show you guys how we did all the post-production for this time-lapse and yeah, take through, you through all the steps, you should be able to create your own Zoom transition time-lapses. Can we start again? Yeah. Zoom transitions have become quite popular in something these days. And so tonight we're going to show you how to create these time-lapses with this setup here. <laughs> Alright, let's go. So with this shot, we're trying to achieve a wide angle which is going to punch in to the clock. We could do this with one camera, but zooming in that much you'll lose a lot of resolution. So we're actually going to do it using a second camera. And then in post, we can tr transition between the wide shot to the zoomed in shot. We've got a wide using a 16 to 35 millimeter lens and a zoomed in one using a 70 to 100. The idea is that we're going to use the start of the time lapse from the wide and it's going to transition and move into the zoom. So for the wide shot, we're going to have it tracking. It helps add flow and movement between all the shots. If you have a little bit of movement, it just keeps that momentum going. So I've got my exposure set. I shot a speed of about four seconds to help blur out the traffic. An aperture of about 7.1 and ISO 100. It's quite bright, so we can have our ISO quite low. To get my focus, just going to click it into autofocus. Let it focus, and then it's important to change it back to manual focus so the focus doesn't shift during the time lapse. The record time for these time lapses can be quite short because the final clips are only going to be four or five seconds in playtime. For this time lapse I'm going to go about 35 minutes. I've set the playtime to 16 seconds. This is long enough that we can speed ramp it in post but it also allows enough frames for blending and transitions. This results in an interval of 5.3 seconds. This caters for a long enough exposure for the cars and people to blur. This helps smooth out the time lapse and make it less jittery. So my timing parameters are all set for the time lapse. It's taken so long to record this quick tip that I'm just going to check my exposure again. It still seems good to go, so we're good to start the time lapse and get this recorded. But for this shot here, we're going to be using the Genie Mini as an intervalometer, but we're actually setting our motion to zero. This is because we want a locked off shot that's going to be focused on the clock, and this is going to be the shot that we're going to punch into. So for the exposure on this camera, I'm going to set it to the same settings as the other camera. This way, both the time lapses from both the cameras will match and look like they were taken from the same camera at the same time. So for my timing parameters, I'm going to set them to the same as the previous time lapse. The reason for this is so that the two time lapses match. So now I'm good to go and I'm going to press record. Right, so we're, we're back at the studio and now I'm going to take you through how to create these transitions. They're really quite simple, it's just a matter of repeating a bunch of simple steps over and over again and linking all the time lapses together. The best tip I can give you for making these transitions look good is you really want to maintain variation in the transitions. You don't want to keep doing the same transition over and over again, that just gets really monotonous and it's not exciting. So just try and come up with new and unique ways of doing this. The second thing you want to do is maintain momentum. Try and always have some form of movement going on. Okay, so let's take a look at what's required to compile one of these time lapses. The first thing I'm going to do is grade and then convert the raw files into a JPEG or TIFF sequence using Lightroom. Although After Effects can import raw files, I would highly advise against this as this makes the viewport very, very slow to load and it can make it quite tedious. In Lightroom, I'm going to create two collections so that the time lapses won't get mixed together and I'll import these two time lapses into these two collections. Now I need to grade these two time lapses. One really important aspect of developing these two time lapses is just like how we use the same camera settings and time lapse settings for both of the time lapses, we want to use the same develop settings. This is because we want the two time lapses to match as closely as possible so that it can help us create the illusion of a seamless transition. As you can see, I've already graded the first frame of the wide time lapse. Selecting all of the images, I'm going to sync these settings across both of the time lapses. 
I'm now going to export these time lapses individually by selecting each of their respective collections and pressing export. For each time lapse, I will export a TIFF sequence. However, you can also export a JPEG sequence if you want to save some space. So inside After Effects, I'm going to import these two TIFF sequences. By default, After Effects assumes a frame rate of 30 frames a second, so we're going to need to change this. Right click on your footage and under interpret main, you can reassume the frame rate. So I'm going to set this to 25 frames a second. However, just set this to whatever frame rate you need, depending on where you are and what, yeah, what your requirements are. With my wide time lapse selected, I'm going to drag it down and drop it onto the new comp button. This will create a new composition that uses all the same settings as the wide time lapse, so it will have the same resolution and frame rate. As the final video is going to be 4K, we need to adjust this resolution. So I'm going to right click on the composition and under composition settings, I'm going to reset the size. So as I said, this is 4K, I'm going to set this to 3840 by 2160. I'm going to just press OK and this will resize the composition. What you will now notice is the composition has been cha changed in size but the footage is just way too large, so we're going to need to scale down the footage. Under the Transform Scale dropdown, in here I can resize the image just by grabbing the slider. However, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you, in brackets, type your resolution of your composition, which in my case is 3840, and then you divide that by the width of your time lapse, and then close brackets, and multiply this by 100, and hit Enter, this will scale your time lapse to perfectly fit your composition. Okay, so now the, the wide time lapse is all set up. Uh, at this point, you can add speed ramps and all those things, but I'm just going to leave it for this tutorial. So the next thing I want to do is drop in my close up time lapse. So I'm going to just drop this on the layer above the wide time lapse. Uh, and the layers in After Effects work very similar to Photoshop, so if you're familiar with that, the concepts do carry across. So one thing you're, I'm noticing here is that my composition time is actually too short to fit the new time lapse. And because we want that overlap in it for it to be a bit longer, I'm just going to jump back up into composition settings and change the length of the composition to fit both of the time lapses. So I'm just going to set this to 20 seconds. With this composition larger, I can now go in and by dragging the, the top time lapse along the timeline, I can line it up so that the two clocks match exactly in time because I want it when it transitions from the wide to the close for the clocks to be at the same time because that just, that just makes sense. So with my time lapses now lined up on the timeline, I can start work on the transition. The first thing I want to do is scale down the top close up time lapse and lay this over top of the underneath time lapse. This is so I can transition into this point and we want this to line up. The time lapse is now about as accurate as I can get it in place. However, you can see it still doesn't really line up perfectly. Now, to be honest, it doesn't actually need to line up that well at all because everything will be hidden in the motion blur during the transition. But to be a little bit more accurate, I'm going to apply a corner pin. This can be found under the effects tab and just type in corner pin. I can drag and drop a corner pin effect onto this bit of footage. This will allow me to distort and warp the footage a little bit more accurately to get it to all line up just a little bit better. One thing you might be wondering is, why is the punched in view darker than the outside view? Now, this is a mistake I made in the compiling step where I actually forgot to enable lens corrections. And what this will do is it will remove the vignette around this image and make them match because basically the vignette is darker than the area around it on the wider image. So rather than going back and recompiling it, I'm going to just jump into the effects tab again and apply a curves modifier. So with the curves modifier, I'm just going to adjust this until this footage looks like it matches roughly. I know it's not perfect, but we'll hide our crimes later. Okay, so with these two images lined up, the next part is to create the zoom in transition part of this zoom transition. Um, the logical step you might be thinking is, right, I'm going to get both these these time lapses, I'm going to keyframe them and I'm going to scale them in. However, this is going to create a few issues. The main one is you want these images to stick together as though they're one image. So I'm going to create a new null object. What this will allow me to do is link these two images to this null object 
and by scaling this object, they will scale as though they're one image. It's kind of like sticking both the images in a folder in Photoshop. So with this null object created, what I want to do is I want to position it in the exact position where when I scale it up, it will scale all the footage and it will all end up in the right position. This may take a little bit of trial and error and you need to be very accurate, but once you've got it in position, it makes everything very simple. So I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna hit the keyframe toggle and then I'm gonna step seven frames forwards by pressing page down. So this means that my transition will have a duration of seven frames. Okay, so this null object is exactly where I want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select both of my time lapses and pick whip them using this little spiral tool onto the null object. This will mean that these two time lapses are locked to this null object and they will scale with it. So I can just scale up the null object and as you can see that all the images scale with it. And I'm just gonna get it so that it ends up perfectly lined up, centered on this clock, nice and close in. By default, After Effects moves between two keyframes using a linear transition. We want this to have it ease in and ease out. So to do this, we're gonna click on this little graph icon and then going into the keyframing settings, I'm gonna click on the little Bezier click curve buttons down here to add an ease in and an ease out. And then I'm gonna drag the little handles until we've got a nice curved slope. This means that the time lapse will begin by zooming in slowly and then it will speed up near the center and then slow down near the end. This will just make the transition feel much more soft and more fluid. Awesome, so we have our transition all set. Let's have a look at where we're at. So I'm gonna just drag these handles so I can select the playback area. And by hitting zero on the numpad, I can do a RAM preview. This will create a preview of the time lapse so we can see in real time how it looks. So as you can see, the movement looks great. However, it feels very really stuttery and jittery. The problem here is there's no motion blur. As you can see, as I pause over these frames, it's very jarring as it moves along. The other issue that's present is the time lapse, the zoomed in time lapse is there all the time, even before the transition. So we're gonna need a keyframe that's opacity. To adjust the opacity, this can be found under the transform dropdown. In here, I'm gonna set the opacity to zero on the first frame and then press keyframe. Jumping a few frames in, I'm gonna find a place where the time lapse should be mostly present within the frame. And at this point, I'll change the opacity to 100%. Now for motion blur. This is very simple. All we need to do is check the motion blur boxes on each of the layers and enable motion blur. And there we go, we have motion blur. I'm just gonna quickly preview this transition again. You can see how much better it looks with the motion blur enabled. It just hides everything and makes it feel way more fluid. You should now understand the core principles of creating zoom transitions. And so feel free to go out there and try it on all different kinds of time lapses. As an added extra, I'm gonna quickly show you how to create that effect where it rotates and follows the clock. To do this, I'm just gonna create another null object. And I'm gonna position this directly on the center of the clock. I'm gonna link the last null object to this new null object. So everything is gonna follow the rotation of this object. Then moving along, once this hand has rotated twice around the clock, I'm gonna set another keyframe. Then down in the rotation, I'm gonna rotate it negative two. So like two rotations backwards. This way, it will rotate at the same speed as the clock as it moves around. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create a really simple zoom transition time lapse. If you have any questions about this or any of the steps didn't make sense, just feel free to ask in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos like this one and more advanced tutorials and more basic tutorials, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we are in Auckland. I love Auckland. It's, this is in New Zealand. In New Zealand, it's a 